Hello, my friends, and welcome to Fishery. I'm Alexander Williamson, your host as always, and today we are talking about color vision and how it evolved and what it is that the ubiquitous little zebrafish from the fish keeping hobby can teach us about color vision, perception, and what it even is to see. Yeah, it's going to get a little weird in that you know in a recent episode we just talked about how different cells create different pigments and some of those are an illusion and our eyes see reflective light from crystals in cells called iridophores that cause almost all the blue, purple, and green in animals. They don't really have those colors in their pigments. They really only have red and yellow and orange, a little bit of black, a little bit of white, and all that mixed together you get the browns, the earth tones, but all the rest is an optical illusion. However, what's not an optical illusion and why we can see them so vividly is because we actually do have color vision. And believe it or not, the humble little zebrafish actually has better color vision eyesight than we do naturally. They can actually see ultraviolet light somewhat, and they can differentiate it from the light that they're seeing with their eyes. They can actually perceive light directly through their skull and into their brain, and it gives us a sneak peek into the evolution of how sight evolved in all living things, ourselves included, and it may even unlock the secrets to colorblindness in humans. So forget about those goofy glasses that were trending years ago on YouTube with Logan Paul trying to say that, you know, it made him his colorblindness disappear. And come with me on a journey where we're going to talk all about the evolution and the perception of how we see and how we think color. First, we need to talk about how it is that humans see color vision because this will cover our bases for a whole lot in this episode. And then we'll talk about how fish, specifically zebrafish, perceive color vision and how old these evolutionary traits are and how they're actually linked to the brain before the cells in our eyes that allow us to see color. So for humans, we see color with little cells in our eye and the light goes into our eye, reflects around, and basically little specialized cells are connected to nerves and they send impulses to our visual cortex. And we have rods and cones. We split up the cells into two groups. You may be familiar with this. But basically, we see kind of reddish colors. We see blue and we see green. And the cones pick up the colors. And there is a specific cone in all animals' eyes that have actual eyes. And I'll put up a chart right here that shows you some of the different combinations. Some only have two cones. For instance, Mice and a lot of mammals have lost some of their cones over time because they don't need to see so many colors. They only need to see a few colors and that's fine. However, we found that in fish, when we get rid of certain cones like the blue or green cones, they can't find food, they can't swim or navigate, they can't survive. They need these. And in other species, we actually find that they need the ultraviolet light receptors that we can't even comprehend as humans. It's some other light spectrum that we can't see. And all that color is seen in the cones. Now, in human eyesight, rods are another little shape of cell. And what they see is different tones of brightness. So they see light and dark or shadow, or basically they color kind of your black and gray scale over the color vision. So like a projector, you've got those three or four key colors in any animal, and then you've got your gray scale usually. Well, fish have evolved a different system, and due to brand new research, we have unlocked some incredible mysteries about fish. So humans, we see with the cones and rods in our eyes, and that signal goes back into our brain and tells us, ah, okay, I have a signal, I'm seeing this much of red. And we know that because 
X amount of the, say there's a thousand in your eye, there's actually way more, but a thousand of the red perception cones are firing out of a thousand. So I'm probably looking at an all red picture. And then a certain signal of a certain neurotransmitter goes along the nerve in your brain and tells your visual cortex, hey, he's seeing red. Then another hormone or neurotransmitter is fired off from our hypothalamus and, it, and visual cortex. And it says, hey, there's some texture to the red. So maybe we're seeing a picture of a room with everything in it is red. And so it has shapes to it. So that's the rods in our eyes saying, yes, there are lines and there are shades of red, different dark red, light red. And that then is overlaid over the info it just got in our brain to see red. So we actually imagine what our eyes see by the signal our brain gets. This is why you can dream and see color with your eyes closed. You're thinking about it all with your eyes closed and you can still see color oftentimes. Some people don't say they dream in color, but humans have the ability to dream in color and this is why. We also have the ability to hallucinate. And it was not known for a long time what if any connection there was to vision and dreams and sight and why we could dream in color or why it is that people who are completely blind could still sometimes see color in their dreams. And it's because the signal that comes specifically from those cones and rods, they go to the brain and they say, hey, we're seeing red, hey, we're seeing this. And we need context of an input or a signal on those lines for them to work. However, if someone ever had color sight, their brain has received input on that. If they've never seen sight, then it's not as clear if they're seeing true color or if it's more of a grayscale or if it's different for different kinds of blindness. However, when a human is colorblind, it's the equivalent of turning off the signal from that red cell. So say there's a red room, well, some people are only going to tell that it's grayscale. They're not going to be able to see that it's all red light. They're just going to be able to see the shadows, the light, the darkness. And it's pretty handy that we have that backup system of seeing shade and light or dim and bright through rods and not through the same cells as color. Well, it turns out fish can actually see light with their brain. Yeah, what? The cells in the pineal gland of fish, if you believe in DMT, the spirit molecule type stuff, and you research that, you know that the pineal gland in the human brain also produces DMT. Well, in fish, the pineal gland is very different. In humans, this gland mostly regulates sleep and the production of hormones in our endocrine system. And it makes us feel adrenaline, it makes us feel awake, it makes us feel tired, it makes us feel calm, it makes us feel different things like night and day. Well, evolutionarily speaking, now we can track the genetics of which types of animals evolved which set of color cells in their eyes and which perception of color in their brain in which order because there are specific genes associated like little placeholding name tags for each thing. And so while mice have lost their blue and green color vision, fish have actually gained another set of sensors in their eyes and perception in their brain. So we have found that the fish, we don't quite know why they can sense and see night and day through the top of their skull. So in specifically bony fish like the little cartilaginous cyprinids and in the case of zebra danios or zebra fish, danio rario, they are able to see with their pineal gland, and here's a picture, through the cartilaginous skull and they can sense night and day. And this is how they can decide to sleep with half of their brain and be awake with the other half of their brain. And their pineal gland is set up so that it can send sensory signals to the left or to the right. And fish actually sleep with half their brain asleep on the right so that they can still swim and move, kind of coasting, and that they're ready to go if danger occurs. Whereas if something else happens when they're sleeping, on the other side, their brain can switch in a second 
and that side of the brain can wake up too, or they can alternate it every 10 or 15 minutes, and by the end of the night, they've rested both sides of their brain. Now, I wish we could do that, but the pineal gland controls that. It also turns out that the pineal gland in the brain of zebrafish, and I have a note here because I can't remember all these genes, also is responsible for producing the photoreceptor sensory signal called PP1. And there are a type of proteins associated with those signals to the brain. So I told you about the cells in the eyes. Well, fish have eyes with different cells too. They have cones and rods. And just like us, they can sense light and dark, but it turns out they don't need their eyes to see light and dark. They can sense it through their brain. They can't see color necessarily through their brain without you know, their eyes. But this is from all the way back when we were simple life forms swimming in the ocean four or 500 million years ago, before eyeballs were even evolved in different organisms yet. This was how we were seeing. And this remnant trait is still useful for fish. And it's still what controls their circadian rhythm. And the fact that it can perceive differences in the different shades, just like we have to sense in our eye with the rods, when I was talking about the red room, the textures and things we see, they have that ability in their pineal gland, in the cells, in their brain as well. And it turns out that now we can go back and we can turn off or on certain cells in the zebrafish and we can get rid of their blue vision or get rid of their blue and green. And when you take these away, they're like primary colors. They take away a lot of subtle hues, especially as you take more than one away. And it turns out that these fish really need blue and green to be able to find food, navigate water and survive. But they're still getting signals in their brain for blue and green. Even when we took their eyes away, they're still somehow processing blue and green, some sort of visual signal. And it turns out that it's because of these receptor genes that go way far back that had a purpose in the brain that we're still not 100% sure of before color even. So these are repurposed organs or chemical reactions in the brain, little sub organs and responses of our old ancient brain that still have now a use that we've evolved into complex eyesight. But before that, they were doing something else. Maybe it was the circadian rhythm. Maybe it was the earliest versions of sight. But now we're finding that the genes A, lowercase r, r3, lowercase a, senses dim light, and capital S, lowercase a, g, and then b, lowercase, are also another, uh, another uh, sensory protein that is sent to that part of the brain and then can say, to their brain, which is not necessarily getting visual input, it's getting the input from the nerves and from these uh, proteins that are firing in the brain and having chemical reactions and then sending signals. And it turns out that they can sense that shade of light and darkness, not just with the cells in their eyes, like I said, but actually they see it on a spectrum based on how long a chemical reaction occurs in their brain. So on the ARR3A, signal, that protein, when it shows up, say it shows up for 400 nanoseconds in their brain. Well, then their little node in their brain, in their pineal gland, will sense that that's there for 400 nanoseconds, and that equals 400 nanometers of light. And if you look at a light chart, you can see that nanometers equal light. 500 is gold, if you don't recall from the last episode. So they can actually perceive shades of color in their brain without their eyes, even if we get rid of the structures in their eyes. And all of this is mapping the evolution of which animals saw which colors, which animals saw UV light or ultra, you know, ultraviolet light, which animals see infrared possibly or far red spectrum, and which animals are able to see dim versus bright and texture overlaid over the color versus if it's tied in with the color, in some process where it's measured in time also, like maybe 400 nanometers is light blue. And that's like saying that in the brain that at a certain nanometer, say uh, 500 nanometers, you see the golden color. And at 505 nanometers, they see a little bit more of a darker shade of that gold color. And that the brain is able to perceptually understand that because of the signal to their pineal gland 
and it is, is so sensitive to the thousandth of a second of that chemical reaction that it understands it that way, rather than in our brains, we get re reception by our eye sees it, it sends the signal, it's either there or not, and we either see color or don't. Uh, and it can fire off color in our brains while we're sleeping and things, but to be that detailed with the color and the gradients and everything all interplayed in a full vision array like you see here, that is going on probably in the zebrafish's perception right now. Pretty incredible stuff. And if we can unlock all of this, we may very well be able to unlock how to give people who are colorblind their sight back in full color. Pretty incredible stuff that they are researching. Thanks to our little friends, the Zebra Daniel. You guys, as always, thank you so much for watching. I couldn't do this without you, without the subscribers, the likes, the sharing. You guys, the sharing is so important. And also the comments and you guys teaching me stuff. It is so invaluable. Thank you so much. And I will see you guys next time on Fishery. Have a great day.